sorry, just adjusting the camera there. Okay. Hi. <laughs> uh, welcome to episode number 767. And the title today is Surf Love is So Underrated, yet is perhaps the most, I didn't say perhaps, but it is the most essential skill in life. And here's why. So I'm going to explain that because that sounds like a good introduction. Before I do though, let me introduce myself before I introduce the topic um, and start with saying that my name is Barry Selby, in case you didn't already know that. And I am a passionate champion for the divine feminine. I help women create balance in love, life and business through coaching, through my inspirational talks, through my books. My best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, is still doing well in the charts. Um, I'll put a link in the comments for the end so you can get that. It's for singles and couples, men and women. It's 50 Principles for Healthy Relationships. I'm also um, a very adamant stand for respect for women, hence being a passionate champion of the divine feminine, the work I do. And it's what inspired these talks starting over two years ago, two years ago, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And to be transparent, not all of these talks are dedicated towards women. However, it's generally more women who watch, respond, and interact with these videos. So the guys don't seem to want to do that. And I have no control over that. But I do know that the topics I share are relevant to both genders quite often, and this is one of them. And I'm going to speak to this because it's a lesson I've had to learn as a man, but also that every single one of my clients who are all, or but one of them are women, I'm just checking, remembering my, yes, one of them wasn't a woman, <laughs> one was a guy, but all of them have got the same thing going on. And so I'm pretty much, not guessing, but presuming that that's something you're dealing with too. So self-love, underrated, essential at the same time. I'll start with the underrated part because this is where we fall into this trap. And I just, I, mean, I saw a post earlier from a friend of mine today that she, she comments, she posted something about, um, it's interesting how our education system, not education system, I read it as, because she says something else. Our education system lacks any teachings on self-love, yet it's so essential for life. And that's what gave me this inspiration for this topic. And I'm gonna explain myself and this piece too. So the reason I believe, or the reasons that, it, that self-love is so underrated because a lot of people tie self-love to egotism and egotism is a bad thing according to what we're raised in this culture to believe yet a lot of people in leadership demonstrate egotism every single step of the way anyway not going down that road because <laughs> that way get dangerous and messy however self-love i'm really, really clear about is not about egotism there's selfish behavior yes but self-love isn't selfish in fact self-love is so much more than that, and I'll get to that in a minute. So, underrated, self-love is underrated, oh yes. So, for men especially, self-love is underrated because we're always told to man up, to, to suck it up, not to be emotional, not to cry, not to feel sad, not to feel anything. So we as men are never thought to think about self-love as a practice because it's against being a man, almost, because we're not supposed to be allowed to have that sort of sensitivity. So half the, po half the population, is out of having self-love because they're not told it's okay. For women, self-love is something that is also not necessarily assigned because for many women, they've been raised to have to be strong to survive in the world, that either they're gonna be kept by a man who's gonna love them, they don't need to love themselves because a the man's gonna do that for them. That's one of the old paradigms. Or they're gonna be so push pushing things through in the world, they're gonna keep working hard and making things happen. And for women who are wives and mothers, there's too much stuff to do in the world, so there's no time to love themselves. So self-love is ignored a lot, and I want to make that I want to make that different. Sorry, I want to I want to change that. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to make that, not make that, and change that, because I be, personally believe that self-love is a fundamental practice that everybody, male, female, old, young, straight, gay, doesn't make a difference that everybody can benefit from applying to themselves in their lives every day and there are very way, various ways of doing that i'll get to that in a minute too but let me talk about the benefits first so underrated first benefits of self-love how to apply yeah that makes sense okay so this is going to be the part the part of my talk <laughs> you've got enough you've got enough understanding i believe from what you said about why self-love is so not really rated very highly or thought about oh one more thing for that Another reason why self-love is underrated is because we've also been raised in this culture that we get love from somebody else or something else. That we're not some, we're not 
self-sufficient enough to love ourselves that when we love ourselves so it would basically go against type for all the marketing hype out of the world that wants to sell us all the different things the drugs the cars the toys the clothes the, the lifestyle everything else that will make us feel better because that will stop us having to feel like we need to love ourselves so all of the marketing hype and all the dating sites and all the all the relationship centric conversations have been about you know you'll find your love out there not in here and that is actually bullshit so just to be clear all right that's enough of the reason why it's underrated and not looked upon as being valid. Let me speak to now to the core of this, which is why it's so important. First of all, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> it's like, how do I want to say this part? Okay, here, I'll say it this way, because I'm trying to, it'll come different angles. So first of all, um, you're the only person who are going to be with you your whole life. Sorry to break it to you, won't be anybody else. From when you're born to when you leave this planet, you're the only person to be with you the whole time. If you depend upon somebody else to love you, there's going to be times in that period of time where that won't happen. So loving yourself is the best way to make sure you're in loving experience the whole way through life. That's kind of like simple mathematics. Another part of this though, and I went through this experience myself, so I know what this feels like. So we go through experiences in life where people may not approve of us. May people may be negative to us, whether it's in our faces or in writing or in a post we do on social media nowadays, or we get a bad review at work, or somebody reports something about us that was not true. That's happened to me a couple of times. The temptation is to get into upset, hurt feelings and either shutting down or be angry and upset the other person. If, however, you've been practicing and, and deepening your own self-love, the reacti reactive state to either shut down or get reactive and angry isn't there anymore. What is there is the ability to respond because you may need to face your accusers with some um, calm, clear, effective communication, which if you're loving yourself, you can do that. But it's hard to do that when, you're in tr when you've been triggered and upset and, hurt and you have hurt feelings. Self-love is, is actually a tool you can use when you do get hurt feelings, because it does happen, to basically be the soothing balm to that woundedness inside. When you love yourself and when you practice self-love, shit's going to happen. Let's be real about it. So if you have a breakup in a relationship or someone, again, is negative or writes bad things about you or says something to your face, first of all, you won't take it as personally, first of all. Secondly, your recovery time from that wounding to being okay again will be much briefer if you've been doing self-love practice along the way. Self-love is more than just simply, I'm going to love myself, I don't need anybody else, which it can act like at times. Again, not selfish, self-love, different. But self-love as a tool, as a practice, is a absolutely fundamental t uh, methodology to put, put yourself in a place where you can be centered in yourself all the way through life where you can be less reactive to what goes on around you and where your choices will be always, especially if you stay in that place, resource-based. As in you make choices from your truth, not from some need to get something from outside. Because a lot of our choices we make, again, speaking to what I said at the beginning, is the choices we make oftentimes are based upon what we think we can get from somebody else or from what somebody's going to think of us because we didn't make the right choice before or something like that. When you are practicing self-love, your choices come from a place of a preference versus a need. If they don't like you, no big deal. In fact, you won't make half the choices you've been making when you love yourself because there's no need to get fixes from outside. Your choices of food, your choices of attention, your choices of entertainment, your choices of connection, your choices of friendships will change when you love yourself more. Because it's simply that true, is that your self-love, your self-support, is what's always the part that seems to be missing when you don't love yourself. And so the need to get fixed from outside is the trap we fall into because we've been trained by society, unfortunately, to keep looking out there to get the fix, to make us feel okay, but it only lasts a few minutes, then we have to get another fix, and another fix, and another fix. When you love yourself, there is no need for the fix because there's nothing to fix. As you can tell, I'm pretty passionate about this. So self-love as a principle and as a focus is fundamentally 
life-changing for everybody. And so it's the most important thing because when you learn to love yourself and when you practice self-love in a daily or systematic or regular practice, your um, inner structures inside are resourced and filled up so like you don't need to be, you won't be drained by any other people or you won't be drained by others and you won't be at the whim of other people, I'll put it that way. That's the thing about being in this place where we live in a life that is so much about appearances is a lot of us, and I live in LA with a lot of appearance stuff going on, that when we're in this place of being seen by others, oftentimes we are caught up in the perception of the we're gonna look the right way, the right fashion, the right clothes, the right looks, the right car, the right appearance, the right hairstyle. Well, you know, I, I do what I can. Um, the right different things to be visible, to be seen, to be appropriate, to be in the right company, to be in the right place, to be seen in the right crowds, especially on social media with all the selfies. It's almost like you, people are fighting to be loved by the masses because they don't love themselves. Self-love, fundamentally, absolutely guaranteed, is the way out of this madness. It's what I do with my clients, I should say what I teach with my clients and working with my, well, my followers too. I mean, I've, I created a self-love guided meditation practice for this very reason over almost a year ago. I was teaching it back over a year ago and then created a product because that way you can use it whenever you're ready and it doesn't have to be up to me. And yes, I'll put a link in the comments for that at the back end. But the thing is that self-love is not a hard thing to do. It's a hard thing to remember to do. And that's the challenge because we're so, in, in, as I said before, we're so, um, not impound, what's the, what's the word? Um, impacted, that's the word. We're so impacted by society's teachings of lack, of separation, of need, of fulfillment from outside, of external referencing for everything. Most people forget that they can actually love themselves without anything else. I'm here to remind you you can. In fact, I'm here to encourage you to make self-love a priority, whether you're a man or a woman, if you're in a relationship or not in a relationship, if you're straight or gay, it doesn't make a difference. Because self-love is something you can do anytime and all the time. And for me, it's a simplistic piece because when you do learn to love yourself, everything else changes, as I said. Every relationship, if you're in a relationship now, practicing self-love makes you a less needy partner, makes you a greater contributor to the relationship, and it makes you less of a reactionary to what happens with your partner. You actually make better decisions for yourself too because if you're in a toxic relationship, self-love will generally give you the doorway to leave the relationship. So. I'm not saying self-love gets you out of relationships, but if you are in a place where you're not being taken care of and respected, your standards of quality of what your life is about with self-love get raised. So the choice points you make are very clear because when you love yourself, you just realize you'll say yes to this and you say no to that. You won't settle for less than you deserve because you know you're worthy. And the funny thing about worth, and I mentioned this in another talk before, worthiness is actually one of these really weird things. We fall into this trap that we think somehow that when we get certain things, we have certain to uh, toys or we have certain right relationship, we'll be worthy. Well, let me put it this way. You were born worthy. Independent of your circumstance, independent of much, money's in the bank. Spiritually speaking, as I've said before in other talks, one of my teachings I learned was that we're spiritual beings having a human experience. Who we are as divine beings is worthy, period. So to think that we have to do something to be worthy, we have to get something to be worthy, is an illusion. And when you love yourself, the self-love practice I'm talking about, when you learn to love yourself more comfortably, comfortably and confidently, then you'll remember your worthiness. You won't become more worthy. You'll just remember that you're already worthy. And that's the thing, is that self-love opens the doors to so much more abundance in appreciation, in caring, in joy, in celebration. It makes life so much more fun because you're not hooked into other things. You're free to move around and do things. You're free to do what you want and you're free to trust yourself again. I've been creating new products, new programs because I'm so passionate about this work, because the work I'm doing now more and more and more, more and more, say that in English, the work I'm doing more and more with my clients is to help them learn the ways to love themselves and to take care of themselves so they can have what they want in life. The Coming Home to Yourself course that I've talked about, not for a few days, but the Coming Home to Yourself course that I'm launching group program is a multitude actually, it's over 15 now, different keys about self-support practices that will add to self-love so that you can learn to be so much more able to rely on yourself, to love yourself, to appreciate yourself, and to trust yourself that your life will be transformed forever. So I'll put the links in the comments as I mentioned. So that's the book, Self-Love and Coming Home to Yourself, just so you know I'm putting in the comments. Um, 
and one and just felt like I put in the put in my uh, clarity conversation discovery session you can have with me as well but I want to say this one more time because this, this is fundamental for so many people is that self-love is overlooked underrated and ignored because we've been trained to think that way we are so reactionary to what happens in the world especially to right now with social media being comparisons to other people when you see your friends on social media who have gone to exotic locations or having a great meal at a great restaurant or sitting out on a beach somewhere it's tempting to be comparative and to judge ourselves harshly because of that self-love is the curative ointment for that condition <laughs> so to speak and my point is very simple is that self-love is not going to start solve every problem but it will start you on the journey to becoming more appreciative of who you are independent of what other people do and yes other people still do what they do but you what you'll notice when you start loving yourself is when you see those posts you'll be happy for them and you'll be fine with that you won't be so it won't be judgmental or comparative or upset or any of that triggered stuff because triggering happens when you don't love yourself you get to respond versus react and that will change your life on so many levels but it starts with the simple act of loving yourself and I, I recommend myself a practice because I've, I've taught it I've used it I help my clients with it it's it's so uh, it's simple and it works so whatever you use to love yourself to remind yourself to practice this whether you use a timer on your phone with it with a, to beep on the hour or something like that to say go go look go love yourself or, or just take a moment take a breath to love yourself and just give some teachings okay self-love isn't complicated sounds as simple as it is it can be simply the matter of just putting a hand over your heart and remembering your presence to remember who you are it could be the way you take care of yourself with diet it may be the way you go to the gym or other things you can do I believe it comes back to just simply becoming present to who you are because again you are worthy period there's no earning worth you just remember your worth when you forget so self-love works I don't want to give away my, pra my practice. You, have to, you can go. I, put, I did reduce the price, so just so you know, if you want to get my practice, it, the price came down a couple of weeks ago. So I'll put the link in the comments. You can get that to get started right away because it, it will change your life, and everything around you, all your relationships, will tra transform by doing it. It's the secret sauce, so to speak. It's the keystone. It's the. Um, just thinking, what am I? I was call it. It's the holy thing <laughs> that you've been searching for. For all your relationships to transform, oh yes, uh, uh, one ring to one ring to rule them all type of thing from the Lord of the Rings. That idea is one simple thing that will change your life, change your relationships, and change your experience of who you are. Love yourself first, and everything changes for the better. I think I made my point. Um, I appreciate being with me. That was my rant for the day. <laughs> it was kind of more of a rant than I planned. Um, again, I'll put those four links in the comments so you can check them out and for yourself. And again, self love will work. Um, my book Coming Home to Yourself the new course I'm launching and a discovery session a complimentary clarity conversation with me if you want to get to find out more about what I do and how I can help you I am taking on a few more clients but it's limited so if you want to get in now this is a good time to do it and there's no summer specials which is a good time of year because a lot of people are away um, with that I thank you for watching this is my daily broadcast by the way on Facebook Live I do every day at 5pm Pacific Time um, that's where you can find me my personal page on Facebook which is Barry Selby the replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. Although, as I mentioned yesterday, I'm noticing that you can't search that far back, apparently. I'm noticing when I go through my Facebook business page, I can't get all the way down to my original broadcast, so I've only got about 150 available. However, I do have backup because I put them on YouTube just for safekeeping. So on YouTube, under my channel, which is Barry Selby, please subscribe, there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine, and you can basically scroll all the way down to the first one I ever did. And you can just search through those bunch. You do scroll down for any keywords you want to look for. So I'm kind of biased with the YouTube ones now. With that, thank you for watching. Um, business page I did mention was Barry Selby, the author. I think I did that, yes. And uh, I do invite you to join me live when I go on every day, which again is 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page. So I will be back again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And I invite you to take care of yourself. I always do, and this is a big reason why. So again, self-love is a practice you can do. It's the way you take care of yourself to have what you want in life, to be a better person in your own life, and to be a better person in everybody else's life. Kind of a win-win-win. So with that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow, and I invite you, as always, to take care of yourself, as I said, and uh, I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye.